It is the calm before the storm, college football fans, and especially those of you who are locked in on recruiting. The floodgates are about to open, and we've got Andrew Hattersley on the line to track us on Texas A&M. You can catch Andrew's work on Gigum 247 Sports. Andrew, how are we doing today? Good, and you. Thanks for having me on, Mark. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, you're, always a pleasure. I think this this week is kind of the, you're right, I think calm before the storm is, is probably the perfect word in terms of official visitors and unofficial visitors and camps. I can't, I can't imagine kind of planning everything for next month in terms of I, I hope that you're getting full nights of sleep now. Yeah, the full nights of sleep are coming now, Not in, probably not in the future. <laughs> So basically, uh, Jimbo Fisher and his staff have loaded up uh, each individual weekend throughout the month of June. So that's four consecutive weekends with a lot of top line recruits headed toward College Station. So let's start with that weekend of June 4th and uh, let us know who's coming in and uh, just your basic thoughts on um, uh, their performance on the field and uh, where you think Texas A&M stands in regards to a lean at this point. Yeah, so I think the first the first weekend is kind of kicks off with a lot of uh, it's kind of a mix of important targets. They'll have, you know, right out of the gate, they'll have Denver Harris, who has a you know a top four of Alabama, Texas, Texas A and M, and LSU, and and each of them are going to get an official visit. So Texas A and M kind of gets the first chance. Um, Harold Perkins is a guy he's not expected to decide for quite a while, but he's going to be coming into town with. A lot of his friends and Bobby Taylor will be there and um, other guys, including Malik Silla, Connor, Connor Wigman, uh, PJ Williams, and Donovan Green. These are all kind of Houston area guys that are commits um, that are all coming in town that weekend as well um, for their official visits. And then they'll have another commit from out of state, um, Isaiah Centennia. Uh, he's from Arkansas. Um, and then another Houston guy, couple of Houston guys, Chris Marshall and Bryce Anderson, who are both uncommitted. Um, Bryce Anderson currently has a decision date for July 4th set. So that's another kind of important weekend in terms of this. It's almost one of your last final pitches. And I know he really wants to, during that weekend, sit down and watch film with the coaches and kind of learn kind of the defensive scheme in person. Um, Then the final one is, is somebody recently confirmed as Anthony Lucas coming from Arizona. So you kind of have everybody coming from all over the country. Um, but it'll, it'll be a really important weekend because for a lot of these 2022 recruits, this is their first chance to truly meet coaches in person for a lot of them. Um, and so I know the coaches are anxious to get to get going and, and especially with a lot of their commits and, and start to get to know them better as well. Andrew, this uh, question is a bit of a stretch based on what you just told me, because this is unlike any other year where uh, the availability to campus uh, formally, and it's a difficult to uh, ask for uh, these student athletes to have visited on their own dime. So this is where we are. I know I saw some numbers fairly recently that compared the commitment level uh, and the sheer volume and numbers previous years compared to this one, it's not even close. We're talking 10 or 15% maybe of the commits that we normally have at this point of the year for good reason. They need to get on campus and and, and visit with the coaching staff and and see the campus. That said, do you have a pretty good feel for out of the guys that you just listed, who's a strong Texas A&M lean at this point versus who may be uh, on the outer circle? The two guys I, I feel like they're kind of in a good spot for is Harold Perkins and Chris Marshall. Those are two guys that have developed really close relationships with the with the coaching staff. And again, kind of looking at that that Houston area of recruits, these are two guys that are very close with a lot of the the Texas A and M commits that are currently in the class. But neither of them, I think, is expected to decide until late in the fall or or, or the summer. So the key will kind of be to get them on campus now kind of have your official visit weekend and then try to get them back in the fall again for maybe a game or, or, or um, just try to keep them, keep them in the fold and keep them at games. Um, those are probably the two. I think, I think they've, they've got some work to do with Bryce Anderson. Um, so this weekend will be kind of their, their chance to, to sell him. Um, Anthony Lucas is a hard guy to get a feel for because you just, he doesn't do a whole lot of interviews and he's kind of out on the West coast. So we haven't, we haven't got a, a great chance to talk with him. And then I think with, with Denver Harris as well, they've, they're going to have to 
knock it out of the park that weekend as well with with Alabama getting probably the final the final chance to to sell him before he makes a decision later this summer. Um, I think they've got some work there to do, but of those of that first weekend, I think the guys that they're probably in the best shape for are probably Harold Perkins and Chris Marshall. All the players you mentioned are top 10 in their positions and most of them yeah. closer to the top than the bottom. So we're talking about some top, top level uh, recruits coming in that first weekend on June 4th. Okay. Come right Andrew, I, swinging, right? Come right absolutely. You might as well go, go for the best right out of the gate. Uh, which leads me to this question. As a recruiting guy who's followed this for a long time and uh, certainly talks to other recruiting analysts that have possibly covered it for even longer, is, th is there a, a general thought that it's best to get these guys on campus for the first visit before they go other places and kind of get entrenched as the number one candidate or maybe make that last impression and be the last visit? Yeah, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Um, I think you can make arguments both ways. I think I think in this case, it might be better to get that first visit just because so many of these kids have never been on on campus before. Like uh, this is the, for a lot of them, this is their first visit. Um, so you kind of get the chance to set the bar and, and maybe set the standard where you know, they're kind of always looking back at the at the visits to come, kind of comparing it back to your visit and keeping you you in the fold. They're always going to kind of remember that first visit. Um, for certain guys, for, for certain programs, it's it's tough when 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 somebody like Alabama gets the the last official visit. You you kind of look at Nick Saban and and his his history of closing on recruits. Um, for somebody like him, it's it's probably better to get the last visit where you can kind of leave that lasting impression uh, before they go elsewhere. So it's a it it's a really tough question, especially this year. But I I don't think it's bad to get the first visit and kind of set the bar and and really really impress them coming right out of the gates. Got Andrew Hattersley on the line from Gigum Two Four Seven tracking Texas A and M coming off a nine and one campaign, top four finish in the country, and of course the recruiting from Jimbo Fisher is always top notch and looks to be getting better. Uh, running through the weekends of June to see uh, the visitations uh, list and uh, who's headed to campus. So if I can add seven to June fourth, that would be June eleventh, yeah. basically, and uh, your list there. Yeah, so I think um, that that weekend also looms pretty huge because they'll have um, another top 100 player in Xavier and Wamka coming to town, and and they're really battling Ohio State for him. Um, they'll also have a couple commits in town, and Noah Thomas and Hunter Erb. Um, those two will be in town, and then a lot of a lot of other targets, and they'll have a lot of other targets. And they just added one recently in a, a kicker in Alex McPherson. Um, Jaden Scarlett, they've got safety and Jared, Jared Kerr, uh, one of their top targets on the board and, and probably right up there with Xavier and Wonka as, as a key target is Kojo Antwi. Um, he's set to make his decision on July 5th. And so right now I feel like A&M's kind of in a good spot for him. Um, uh, Georgia's another school that is going to put really push to keep him at home. Um, and so this, Again, this is kind of your last your last pitch, and I would expect, looking at the um, a lot of the commits that were in town the weekend before, I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple more of them come back the next weekend on their own dime and and try to help push for a couple of these recruits and continue to see the coaches. Um, and then they'll also have another important target on town and Inish Harris and Travante Citizen. So it's going to be kind of those first two weekends are going to be right out of the gate. Really, really important. Now, Wamka caught my eye the other day because Iowa plays some solid high school football, but basically yeah. they're churning out tight ends and offensive linemen and a lot of program players to have the, okay, he's the fifth rated safety in the country in the composite. 247 is really high on him as the number one safety in the country coming out of Iowa. I don't think you see that too often. No, you don't. When you turn on the film, his film is really, really fun. I'm not sure I'd want to get hit by him, to be honest with you. I mean, he is he is probably one really, really, really physical safety and um, great job by the Jimbo, by Jimbo Fisher and his staff to get him back on campus because um, he actually came down 
earlier this spring and kind of took a, a self-guided spring break tour through through the campus. So to get to get him back a second time, I know he he said he wanted to come back, but it's always tough to kind of get those out of state guys to come back for a second visit. So getting him to come back for a visit and 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 stay right there with Ohio State and, and Notre Dame and and some of the other schools there is was really important. Talking Texas A&M with uh, Andrew Hattersley from Gigum 247. Andrew joins us on a regular basis, and uh, we always appreciate him stopping all the work that he's got going on and tracking. I, I don't know how you guys track all these athletes. I, I really don't. And, and then keep uh, their 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 huddle tapes and everything that you've got to um, consider in regards to just uh, what you saw on tape and what the scouting reports are and what they're thinking what they said two weeks ago, but then they tweeted something out three hours ago that uh, contradicts what they said two weeks ago. I don't know how you guys do it. I get to, I get told I'm on Twitter too much, but I guess that's that's not a terrible. You have to be. Answer. Yeah, you kind of have to be with notifications and all that stuff. All right, uh, please like the video, share the videos out on social media because if other if you enjoy the content, others will as well. And uh, of course, subscribe right here uh, at the Voice of College Football. All right, weekend number three. Who do we have uh, headed your way? So it's a little bit smaller of a group. It's um, they have Gabriel Brown Lodindi, who uh, I think they're. It's kind of them and Oklahoma are kind of the two right now. He's a his family um, graduated from Oklahoma, so they're going to be battling the Sooners on that one. Um, they'll have another longtime target. They were one of the. Um, the early schools to, to offer uh, Cam Dewberry and have really kept that relationship. One of his close friends is Ke Kenyon Green. Um, so that'll be, they're kind of trying to keep that pipeline going. Um, and then they'll have a couple of, uh, of guys on the defensive side of the ball as well in uh, Aaron Bryant and Derek Brown. Um, Aaron Bryant's an interesting one. His, his recruitment really took off earlier this spring and he was kind of debating how to use his official visits or how many, because he didn't want to use all five this summer because he doesn't plan to make a decision until late November, maybe early December. So he's kind of going to use three now and then save two for the fall. But um, this will kind of be A&M's chance to, to sell him and then try to get him back on campus in the fall if they can. Um, and one of the other ones is Derek Brown, who's from Texas High and Texarkana. And uh, I think A&M right now feels, feels like they're in a pretty good spot for him. Um, but this weekend, again, it'll be a chance of battling the Sooners for him as well. And, and Texas is in there as well. So that'll kind of be their weekend to, to meet him in person and, and, and start to make their pitch. Giga Maggie's Texas A&M on the uh, recruiting trail. Jimbo Fisher, this is always uh, one of the reasons why he's considered one of the uh, top coaches in college football. He brings in the talent. And Andrew, do you have any, any thought? Is there any... Uh, talk down there that this could end up, of course, a lot of pieces need to fall in the right place, but could end up being his best class that he's brought in thus far? Yeah, I think there's gen there's certainly a lot of buzz about that. Um, I know when you talk to a lot of the recruits, they've, they've got their their sights set on, on the number one class in the country, and they're going to certainly push and, and try to recruit each other as, as hard as they can. And um, I think there's a there's a general sense that this class could well end up in the top five. Uh, maybe in the top five, six range, and and maybe even higher. Um, but I, I definitely think coming off the Orange Bowl and and what they've been able to do this spring, they have they have a lot of momentum, and they they've certainly got a lot of targets that they're they're right in the mix for where they need to be. Yeah, anytime you've got a head coach who has a national championship ring on his finger, it's just proof that he knows how to get there and how to win the big game, regardless of how many times, or it just shows that he's done it. And there's only a couple of guys still coaching right now in the country. Yeah. Uh, I think four is the list that I can come up with off the top of my head. So that's it. Uh, four or five right now. And some of those uh, assistants that they have in place right now are, are really good recruiters in terms of Elijah Robinson and Terry Price and um, TJ Rushing's also had a couple big recruiting victories as well. So when you look at at some, and Josh Henson has has quietly put together two really really nice offensive line classes back to back. So when you look at kind of those assistants who put them in the position to to build these relationships and longstanding, really, I feel I think they feel really good about where their kind of recruiting momentum is right now. Moving on to the final weekend of June, which of course yeah. would uh, basically give us the indication that uh, all these student athletes have uh, 
had quite a few visits elsewhere, and this might be a final stop for some of them. Uh, what's the list look like on that final weekend? Yeah, so a busy weekend as well. And it's it's kind of got an out-of-state flavor to it. Um, they've got Keon Sab coming in from IMG Academy along with his teammate uh, Jihad Campbell, um, as well as Kamari Wilson. So it's kind of the IMG weekend a little bit. And then um, – They'll have Caden Story and then a, a couple local guys in uh, Cole Hudson and Kelvin Banks. Um, Kelvin Banks might be one of the biggest targets on the board left for for both in-state programs in and A&M and, 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 and Texas. And then LSU is also fighting to get in the mix. And then really there's, there's, there's a lot of schools who are pushing to get in the mix for him. And um, that's kind of a big one to close out the month. In that group, uh, do you have any particular um, likings toward anybody? I know that they're all great athletes, and obviously they're on campus for a reason, but uh, based on the tape and the scouting reports, uh, who do you really like? Probably the one that um, I think they're they're kind of in the best spot for right now would be Kelvin Banks. I think it's a, it's really a battle between them and Texas, um, with LSU also quietly gaining momentum. And when you turn on the film, I mean, his footwork and, and – just what he's able to do as, as, a, as a guy that could even play tackle or a guard is really, really impressive. And then obviously Kamari Wilson is another talent. They need to add a couple big safeties in this class. I think that's, that's really important, especially this month, whether it's Keon Sab or it's Kamari Wilson. Those are kind of two really important targets given that they, um, they lost Kendall Daniels after signing day this year, kind of left a, a bit of a hole at the safety position from what they thought they were going to have. Um, so I think it's really important, whether it's Wamka or Wilson or Sab, that they kind of land one of those those big targets. Sumlin recruited well. Now the numbers are just flat out better under Fisher. Yeah. So is it just uh, simply that Jimbo Fisher is a better recruiter, obviously has a better resume, has built a staff, as you just outlined, uh, is really uh, good at this? Or is it uh, him taking a different strategy, going to different parts of the country? Have you have you seen any kind of differences in regards to the approach? Yeah, so I think a couple of things on that. Um, they recruit nationally really well right now, especially you know they've been able to go into Florida and land a couple key targets, and and that's another hotbed for talent. And they've they've done well on the East Coast as well because because of Elijah Robinson's ties that he has there. They've been able to land or at least get very much in the mix for a, for a couple for a couple big targets. One thing I think that's noticeable about this staff is they they kind of they they always one always seem to have a plan and two give themselves lots of options because I think they understand as recruiting you're not going to get every single you're not going to bat a hundred percent on every single recruit that you're trying to get, but they have a plan in place on a guy that. If they miss on their top target, they have a 1B who they've been recruiting just as hard or, or right there in the mix as well. And so they're never really caught flat-footed in terms of guys. They always seem to have kind of a, a next best option if, if they need it. And they've, they've just given themselves a lot of options. And I think that's, that's one of the things that you have to do in recruiting is you're always going to go after your top targets but you have to have those guys in place where, you know, if something falls through or somebody decommits or, or something like that, you have kind of that second, that second guy. And it, 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 it helps recruiting with a national championship. As you mentioned, like, there's only a few coaches that have done that. Um, he, he happens to be one of them. So he's kind of used that, that championship pedigree. And you, when you talk to a lot of recruits, they do mention kind of his championship culture and what he did at Florida state. And then, and now he's been able to prove that at A and M, and I think that's really helped as people start to kind of see the the formula being put in place at A and M as well. We enjoy uh, the conversation each and every time with Andrew Hattersley on uh, Gigum Two Four Seven. Check out his work over there. You know the uh, brand Two Four Seven when it comes to recruiting. That's all I need to say. So head on over there, check out the work, uh, whether you like. And as you know, the deal here, Andrew, we've got fan bases from all over the place. So uh, if you just want to keep up with the top schools, head on over. Good things happening with Texas A&M, obviously, after a top four finish and uh, run at a top five recruiting class here. Got Andrew, we through, yeah. got always appreciate through, you stopping through. by. Yeah, my pleasure. And, you know, we'll have unofficial visitors too. And, um, yeah, you'll definitely want to be – be locked in because the unofficial group is just as long as the official group. So there'll be 
you know, 50, 60 visitors on campus over the course of a, a month. So it'll be, it'll be a fun time and, and appreciate you having me on.